Hey folks, Southwest Prepper with the Southwest Prepper Group. So we are going to make an in-depth video on how to build a solar-powered generator, folks, just like this one. I'm going to go through all the components, how to hook it up, a very in-depth video. So if you're interested, stay tuned. It's going to be a long one, but you're going to learn a lot. Alright, here's your bright light warning folks. Sorry about that. I'm just going to turn it on so you can see all the components inside. Here is your charge controller and here is your battery and on the outside here is the inverter. So your inverter is comes in a 12, 24 or 48 volt size. Same with the charge controller. 12, 24, 48 volt size. Your battery are going to be a battery bank of either a 12, 24, or 48 volt in size. All these components have to match, folks. You cannot mix and match components unless your inverter or charge controller says you can do so. So when you look online at these components, you're going to see the charge controller is going to say 12, 24, or 48 volts. Same with your inverter, 12, 24, or 48 volts. And pretty much same with your solar panels, folks. You have to check the voltage on those because those are made for certain voltages. So in order to build a solar system portable, first you're gonna get a case. I bought this case off of, uh, let me turn this light off here, eBay. It's just a hard Pelican case. I bought it, I think, for like 40 bucks. And the sides come off of it. I like that a lot. And I put wheels on it, so it's portable. So, you don't have to have a case, you could put it in a toolbox or just put it on a piece of 2x4 or something like that, or plywood. Uh, to make it more portable, I use the case. So, let me go ahead and open up this side. Let me turn on that light again, bright light warning, just so you folks can see. So again, you got your charge controller here, your battery here. So, your solar panels, come in positive and negative coming in here and they actually go out through my uh, above my AC unit so those go directly into your charge controller your charge controller then from your input you're gonna have an output the output goes into your batteries then you're gonna have some cables some more cables battery cables are gonna go out to your inverter Sorry about that, and that's positive to negative again. So folks, it's not very difficult to build a system. All you have to do is figure out what kind of system you want, either a 12 volt system, a 24 volt system, or a 48 volt system. And of course, with the voltage, the higher the voltage, the more power you get. And a lot of questions people have is, well, if I buy a 28 or a 48 volt inverter, <laughs> I'm trying to make a video here. So if I buy a 48 volt or a 24 volt inverter, can I use my regular household appliances? Yes, folks, all these outlets on these inverters, no matter what the voltage size, you can plug in your 110 uh, volt standard outlet, standard plugs, just like here, into this and it'll work, no matter the voltage of your inverter, folks. This is just a strip I have set on here. Go ahead and turn off that light. So, you have to figure out what kind of system you want. Either a 12 volt system, a 24 volt system, or a 48 volt system. Again, the higher the volts, the more the power. 
So with the battery bank, you could use either six volt batteries, 12 volt batteries, there's deep cycle, there's uh, golf cart batteries, there's diesel batteries, there's lithium batteries. Deep cycle sealed and lithium batteries are safe to use indoor folks. Anything else you're gonna have gas exchange and you're gonna need some venting. So I would definitely use those outside or in a well vented area like a garage or a trailer or something like that. Uh, these batteries are very expensive and they're very heavy. Um, the lithiums are even uh, more expensive, but they're a lot lighter and they've come down in price the lithiums This is an absorbent glass mat battery. I haven't updated to a lithium yet But I plan on doing so uh, This charge controller is actually a step-down charge controller. This will actually allow me to use 24 volt solar panels Onto this 12 volt system because this all this is, is a 12 volt single battery right here folks so my panels up there are 300 watt panels and this charge controller will bump it down so I could use it onto this battery. Uh, most charge controllers don't do that, the newer ones do, so look for that if you have the solar panels already and you don't want to rebuy solar panels, folks. Alright, so now that you figured out whether you want a 12, 24, or 48 volt system, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to wire these. Now there's parallel and in series. When you get up to a 24 and 48 volt system or larger 12 volt systems you're going to have to run parallel and in series which connects all the batteries up to each other. So you're building up your watts and your volts folks. You're going to pick your charge controller 12, 24 or 48 or if it's a step down or step up charge controller that's even better and your inverter 12 24 48 volts now getting into the wattage folks if you just want to run some lights charge up your computer uh, charge your cell phones you're not going to need a lot of watts folks maybe a, a water pump or something like that that's on a timer or doesn't use a lot of uh, watts you can get away with a small system now one thing to keep in mind is once you get power running you're going to want a larger system you're going to want want to run a lot more things like your large tv uh your coffee maker your microwave your maybe even your ac or your fan or your uh, refrigerator folks so before you go out and buy something small which you can I suggest you get a little bit something a little bit larger so once if you do have to plug in like a refrigerator or something like that you can and you're not going to blow out your inverter so check all your appliances see what the wattage is on your appliances do some math and you can kind of figure out what kind of inverter you want from there you're going to want a pure sine wave inverter folks these are the newest inverters coming out they can handle sensitive loads the older inverters were not pure sine wave, it was a modified sine wave and they were good for tools but once you plugged in sensitive devices like laptops and cell phone chargers and stuff like that, they'd burn them out. So that's why you have pure sine wave inverters now. And uh, this is a 2000 watt, a 4000 watt um, surge. This unit will run just about anything I want in the house. It'll run my refrigerator. It'll run my TV, all kinds of goodies. The only thing you got to worry about is battery power. That's my limitation, and the solar panels on the roof are my limitation, folks. If I'm on a cloudy day and I'm wanting to run the refrigerator or the microwave, I'm going to suck down the juice on this battery really quick. So that's another thing to keep in mind as far as battery bank sizes and your solar panel sizes. And if you're looking for a really good deal on solar panels, folks, check out San Tan Solar out of Arizona. I'm an affiliate with them. They'll give you a really good deal. Um, folks, that's, that's where I buy all of my solar panels. You can actually get a pallet of solar panels. Top grade, grade A solar panels. We're talking 300 watts, 24 volts, mono polycrystalline panels. A whole pallet of 20 delivered for about thirty five hundred dollars four thousand dollars folks that's unheard of so i suggest you get get on it do some math check out what kind of stuff you want to power 
and then start building a system. Start off small if you want to, but I'm telling you folks, once you get power going, you're gonna want a bigger system. So if you have any questions, please let me know. This is the Southwest Prepper with the Southwest Prepper Group. Be safe out there, be aware of your surroundings, be prepared, love and light.